this here, oh my gosh, is oh, another viewer's broken gaming PC. And uh, this one's freaking huge. I don't know <laughs> what the point of this is because most of the space in here is totally unused, but it is what it is. Um, apparently this thing turns on and off over and over and over again. And that kind of like quick power cycling can mean a number of things. Uh, I know that the owner initially thought it was a power supply issue, which is a, it's a pretty good assumption. Um, if you're getting just random power on, power off situations, it could be the PSU. Though without proper testing equipment, you're kind of just shooting in the dark. He swapped this out for a newer Seasonic unit and still had the same issue. And that's what's in here now, this updated PSU. Uh, the remainder of the build is actually quite old. So this is a P55 EBGA motherboard, which means we're on the very, very first iteration of the Core i3, Core i5, Core i7 family. I believe there's a Core i5 like 820 in here or something. I can't, I can't remember the, the, the SKU, uh, but it's a very old chip, multiple generations. I mean, we're on what, 12th gen Intel right now. And so if you date that, back, yeah, it's like early 2000s. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm worried because I don't know if I have components on hand to swap out with this hardware. I'm hoping that it's something very simple that doesn't require hardware swaps, uh, but I of course will be willing to do that if it comes to it, I took this on and um, I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. Hopefully we don't have to outright replace everything in here. Yes, it is an older system, but it does get used quite a bit and uh, I'm ready to get this guy back up and running. So let's see what we can do here. Stick around, stay with me. If you're looking for an all-in-one cybersecurity solution, check out Acronis CyberProtect Home Office, formerly Acronis True Image. They specialize in data backup as well as anti-malware solutions from data protection to threat prevention. So let's set up a hypothetical. Let's say you've got a huge stash of important documents stored on your local machine. You're looking for a cloud-based backup solution. Acronis has you covered. And now let's say you've an itch to protect said data from attacks while it sits online, as you should. Acronis has you covered there as well, and you can easily restore information to new hardware in the event of a disaster. Their goal was to simplify the experience for the end user by unifying two otherwise standalone paid solutions, saving both money and hassle. You'll also get a heavy dose of peace of mind while you're at it, and it's very easy to get started. Click the sponsor link below and choose a cyber protection plan that meets your needs, ranging up to five computers and five terabytes of cloud storage. Acronis does the rest, everything from backup to threat prevention and restoration. Use our 30% discount code SALAZAR2022, no spaces, S-A-L-A-Z-A-R-2022, and give Acronis CyberProtect Home Office a shot today. Hey there, my name is Greg and this is Fix or Flop. If you're new to this playlist, what we do is reach out to folks in and around Orlando, Florida and offer to fix their computers for free, or at least attempt to. The only things I ask are that the viewers be okay with us filming these processes uh, and that they, of course, meet to drop them off and pick them back up again. You have to be local. If you are not local, your submission will be ignored. We don't want to deal with shipping of any kind. Can you imagine shipping a system like this, even domestically? If you ship it properly with the proper insurance and the proper packaging, it'll cost you well over $100. And at that point, you might as well just take it to a repair shop because they'll probably charge you a bit less than what it would cost to ship both ways to me and back to you again. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so this case was replaced. Uh, at one point, it was a lot smaller chassis. I believe the, the owner of this picked this up from a friend for like 20 bucks. So despite it being very large and mostly unnecessary. I mean, at least you got it for a good deal. Uh, and the only other thing upgraded in here is the graphics card, which I believe is a 1660 or 1660 Super, somewhere in that ballpark. Everything else is stock and pretty darn old. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into the troubleshooting process. You guys know by this point, we need to power the system on and attempt to replicate the issue described by the owner. In this case, again, remember, just the power on, power off, power cycling problem. So I expect that we'll see some lights, some fan spinning for a split second or two, and then everything should shut back off again. I know that at one point I told you guys I was gonna have this portable monitor linked in the description, and I never included it because I couldn't find this thing for sale anymore. This is a PX160 from Pixio. If you uh, troubleshoot hardware on a semi-daily basis, I do recommend you get one of these. It's just easier than lugging a, a fat monitor around. And uh, best of all, you can just kind of tuck it away. It's thinner than a laptop, so you can bring it with you uh, anywhere you go. Uh, so this is something I do recommend. Just search for portable monitors, decent reviews on Amazon, you'll probably be okay. Uh, the power switch at the rear and power button is somewhere. Jeez, I gotta walk all the way around this thing. All right, moment of truth. 
do. It just completely. Wow. It just doesn't want to stay on. So it's as the under described, power's on and then right back off again. Oh, I am really not looking forward to this one. I wonder with this sound card sitting so close to the, to the graphics card, I just want to make sure that this isn't shorting anything. It doesn't look like it is. A few of the solder points have just um, uh, a bit longer stems than I would like, but hmm, I think Let's see, we can try clearing the CMOS first. So we'll do that. We do have a dedicated button at the rear of this board, which is pretty cool because it's an older board. Uh, and then we can also make sure that RAM is seated correctly. Although I doubt these two things are causing the power cycling we're seeing here, uh, it is worth just getting those out of the way because they take seconds to perform. So here's our reset CMOS button and it's a bit, uh, a bit recessed inside this. So I'm gonna use a SIM tray removal tool. I'm gonna hold this down for about 10 to 20 seconds with the system fully powered off. This will utilize the onboard battery and should clear the CMOS. Although again, I doubt this will fix the issue. It's just one of those things that's so easy to do. I think it'd be a sin not to check ahead of time. The system utilizes DDR3 and it does feel as though each of these DIMMs is properly inserted. I think what I'm gonna do is pull all of them out and I'll swap to just a single DDR3 module uh, that I have on hand that I know works and that'll rule out a potential memory issue. By the way, his front panel looked all right, looked like it was wired correctly. So I don't think this is a case of the system just resetting itself over and over, only bringing that up because we ran into that in a previous fix or flop episode. This seems, yeah, seems okay. Nonetheless, we're gonna detach it and we'll just power the system on by jumping the two power switch pins. Now at this point, if the system powers on, it means that one of the smaller connections is to blame. That's usually a good thing because if you were running a business and you had to call up your client and say, hey, unfortunately, we've got to replace the motherboard. It's going to cost you 200 bucks if you want the same one you've got in here because I don't make these anymore. Or it's going to cost you 400 bucks to upgrade the platform completely because you'll need a new CPU as a result and new memory because I assume it's going to be running on DDR4 at least, not DDR3 here. Uh, so that's just bad news. I'm, I, I'm in doubt about this. I don't think it's gonna work. Make sure we've got, okay, power on there. And let's jump the pins. Same thing. I know you guys can't tell probably from there because the fans aren't spinning, but this system is powering on for a split second, turning right back off again. So that means it's one of our main components. It's either the power supply, the motherboard, the CPU, or the graphics card which is not what I was hoping for. So now we're gonna detach the graphics card. This will rule out a fairly expensive aspect of the build. I'm more concerned about, I should probably unscrew it. Uh, I'm more concerned about the, the platform though, because again, I don't have replacement parts for stuff this old. And I don't just wanna completely upgrade the platform. I don't have too many full platform upgrades laying around. So uh, whatever needs to be replaced, I will probably have to order on eBay, which means that uh, the system will be down for several days, which is never a good thing, especially when you wanna you know, get back to gaming, right? But uh, that didn't fix it. I guess that's a good thing because this is one of the more expensive things in the build, but still, it means we have to dive deeper. I swapped power supplies to see if that was the issue. I doubted it again, but uh, it's still power cycling. So yeah, Wait, what can you do? Sorry, little one. So this CPU is, so first let's remove this CPU cooler. Notice the cooler itself isn't getting very hot and it's just likely that the CPU is not initializing because the system's staying on for like a split second. But swapping the CPU out is a bit easier to do than swapping the motherboard. So that's why we're gonna go with this first. Holy crap, this cooler is sketchy. So this chip is, a Core i5, ooh, 760. Okay, what did I say, 820 earlier? I was way off. Yeah, Core i5, 760. I don't think I have a replacement for that. So at this point, I'm gonna have to order a replacement platform. Basically, I need a motherboard and a CPU because we don't know 
which one is causing the power cycling. And if, if, if it turns out that the CPU I ordered to replace this doesn't fix the issue, well, I'm still out of motherboard and it would be nice to have one of these on hand for future troubleshooting anyway. So we'll go ahead and order both. By the way, in case you're wondering, the socket for this board looks pretty darn clean considering its age. I don't see any bent pins. I don't see any missing pins. Uh, yeah, no reason to suspect the socket is the issue here. Same goes for the CPU, it's in really clean shape. The contact points are all very clean. I don't see any scuffs, any smudges, anything that would prevent the system from posting. So I've placed an offer on a Gigabyte LJ1156 motherboard. This one does have USB 3. I don't think that his current EVGA board does. Uh, this also ships with a Core i3-550, so I figured that'd be nice just to have an extra chip on hand. And uh, I offered him 55 bucks. He has it listed for $64.99, so maybe he'll take that. We'll have 23 hours to uh, uh, to wait. And then I also ordered a standalone CPU, a Core i5-760. It's an exact replacement for his chip. So if his CPU ends up being the culprit, we can very easily replace it. Uh, just, uh, yeah, one for one. Uh, no difference there. And this was only 10 bucks. And these are super old. Nobody really goes after these anymore. So I think 10 bucks is fine. Three days later. We finally have what we need, I hope, to fix this system. The first is the CPU. Now this is an exact replacement for his Core i5 SKU. And then I also found a pretty decent deal on a platform. Uh, this comes with a motherboard, which of course is one of the things I suspect is bad. Uh, also comes with another CPU, and I believe also some DDR3, so. Yeah. I'm really hoping that what is in these packages is able to fix the problem uh, because this is pretty much all we've got left. We narrowed it down to the motherboard or the CPU. It's not as RAM, it's not as power supply, not as case. Uh, it's uh, really, this, this is it. It's the, it's the core components here. And if these don't work, well, we're kind of screwed and we have to start back over again. Uh, but we're gonna test these out of the box first together to make sure they work. And then we'll start swapping one at a time uh, into his rig, we'll set it back up and hopefully we can get a post. Let's see here, come on. Oh yeah, very, very pretty Core i5. This is a 760, so yeah, very old. This was also packaged very nicely, so shout out to the seller on eBay. Now let's get the motherboard box open. I'm not even sure why I'm using a scalpel for this, it's fairly easy to get into. I say that and this thing is like super glued shut. So, okay. Not the original box, not too worried about that. It looked like it was packaged decently. I have no complaints there. Don't expect it will be the cause of this platform not working if it uh, doesn't end up being the case. Lots of packing tape though. That is kind of annoying. I'm getting there eventually. This is why I save my boxes. It's just, if you don't have the product box anymore, it just makes packaging very annoying. And yeah, well, we can SATA cables too, that's cool. How many more layers of bubble wrap are there? There we go, finally. Oh, wrong way. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and one more. Ooh. Oh yeah, so it looks like the board was cleaned as well. That's nice. I'll give you a good look of it there. And uh, yeah, impressive. It's not dark. The PCB is blue instead of black, uh, as was the case on his EVGA board, but hey, it works, right? And this is a Core i3-550 in here. So uh, it's definitely not the one we're gonna swap with his because well, this is a downgrade, but it is nice to have an extra chip like this on hand in case we need to troubleshoot more platforms that are uh, older in the future. So let's test the platform as it is. I will also test the new Core i5, it's not new, but new to us, uh, and make sure that these both work, and then we'll swap one at a time to see which is to blame. And again, we were placing bets in the last video, which do you think is to blame? Is it either the motherboard or the CPU, or is it both? That, we're gonna find out. So with the new Core i5 in the new motherboard, and these are both old components, but new to us, we're gonna power on the board and jump the two power pins. Looks like the fan is trying to spin, but it's not. Okay, it did post though. Do we have, oh, there it goes. Loading operating system, boot disk, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, we have no boot disk attached, that's why. Okay, so um, yeah, we get a post, that's a great start. And now we can pick which one we wanna 
swap out first. It's gonna be easier to swap the CPUs. Judging by the serial numbers on these chips, it looks like the owner's i5 is a tad bit older. Let's see, I'm gonna use my thermal Grizzly Carbonot pad here. Just makes swapping out very straightforward. And we're gonna set these push pins. Uh, that's about right there. Okay, and here we go. I think this is gonna work. So I saw a small light here. There's little debug LEDs. CPU cooler fan is twitching as it was before. And yes, it is working just fine. Okay, so that means it's probably his motherboard that is bad, but we'll know for sure in this next test. So now it is his original board and our newer Core i5 CPU, the one that we just bought on eBay, that we know works because we tested it. Let's connect our GT710. Last thing here is a 24 pin, just a single stick of DDR3 will do. And let's give it a shot. I think we've got power, yeah, we have a dedicated power button, so that's cool. Alrighty. Now, if this works, I'm gonna be awfully confused because, well, it shouldn't work because the CPU is fine. What else would have prevented us from posting? A few moments later. Yeah, so it's just powering on and off over and over and over again, which sounds awfully familiar, right? That's the same symptom we saw in part one of this uh, little fix or flop series here. It just, it wouldn't post, it wouldn't stay on long enough to post. So that means his motherboard is toast. Uh, I don't see, like I said before, I don't see any physical damage on the board. This could be something internal. There's multiple layers of this PCB, so there could be something inside that uh, it's just not adding up, maybe broken traces or what have you. But all I can say is I know this board doesn't work. It refuses to post with any CPU in it, including ones that we have verified are working in other platforms. So at this point, what we're gonna do is replace this motherboard with the one that we purchased for him. And I got it for a pretty decent deal. I mean, considering it's a very old motherboard, I think it paid like $40, $40 or something like that for it. So it's really not that bad. And that included a CPU as well uh, and got that shipped here in about a week. So uh, we'll swap these out and we'll call it. We're gonna give his chip some fresh thermal paste, get his cooler and memory situated, and we'll reinstall the new platform into his case. I actually was planning on upgrading this case, by the way, but while we were waiting for parts to arrive, I ended up giving away the case that I was gonna swap this one out with uh, to someone else, so. Not a huge deal, at least his uh, system works again, yeah? Always a bit tricky doing this standing up, but for the sake of YouTube, we can pull it off. All right, that looks pretty darn good there. We got our sound card and graphics cards installed. Let's see one after another there. And we'll finish basic wiring, including this 24 pin here. Right, and here we are. Uh, looks pretty dang good. I know that the blue motherboard PCB is a bit off-putting considering he's coming from a black one. Uh, really nothing I could do about that. I tried finding decent, right, affordable motherboards like this. I did find one exact replacement for a ZVGA board, but it was like $100 and that's just, that's not why I'm doing this for free anyway. So this is coming out of pocket and this made the most sense because we know this is still compatible. There's no overclocking involved here and uh, the motherboard looked to be in decent shape. So uh, we're gonna give this thing a shot. We're gonna power it on with everything connected and hope, cross our fingers for a post. This is for all the marbles. Let's see. Powers up right away, looking good. Fans at the top and the rear are spinning. CPU cooler always takes a few seconds. I've also got the storage drives connected here, so we should, we should actually post, uh, or beyond that, we should get into an operating system. Oh, the suspense. Please work. We've been through too much here. There it goes. Okay, so that's a post. That is phenomenal news. And are we gonna boot into something? I don't actually know. Yes, hard disk drive zero, loading operating system. Yes, that's it, okay. So, we are ready to go, folks. Dead motherboard. God, that is one of the worst things to diagnose because you have to disassemble and get through everything else. You have to dig through the mud to find out whether or not the motherboard is to blame. But uh, that was it. Swapping that out alone fixed our issues. Everything else in here is all original from his system, uh, including his graphics card, sound card, all of his memory and his CPU, power supply, storage drives, we're good to go. And just a quick recap, with his original board, I don't see any physical defects. I'm sure whatever is to blame is either 
maybe in the chipset or maybe there's just a layer in the PCB that uh, we can't see where something is broken. Um, it just, you never really know. We could check under the VRM heatsink here and see what's going on. You can see all of our pins look to be in the same direction. So don't see any odd flickering of light indicating that the pin has bent out of shape. So yeah, uh, this is beyond repair at least for, uh, for me, given the tools I have in this office. Replacing the motherboard was the quickest solution and it worked. I wish I could tell you a bit more about uh, why this P55 motherboard is bad. Uh, but again, I just don't have the tooling here to, to properly do it. I mean, I can probe everywhere and maybe I stumble upon something, but at the end of the day, there's a defect with this board and I think it has to do maybe with power delivery or the chipset, which is why it keeps powering on and off so quickly. Uh, if it was a like super serious problem, uh, maybe there was just like a big chunk of the board missing or what have you, it probably wouldn't power on at all. So the fact that it is powering on at least for a split second tells me that this might be saving, uh, but it's such an old board. I'll keep it, I'll probably uh, send it in somewhere, maybe send it to EVGA and see if they can figure out what is wrong with it. Uh, but his system is working, that was the whole goal of this, and I'm, yeah, apart from the fact that this system is super big in this huge case, I'm very happy to see it up and running again. He needs to downsize a bit. That's what I would do, but uh, but yeah, I'm happy elsewhere. Were you right? Did you think it was a motherboard or did you think it was a CPU? Let me know in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and stay tuned for the next video. By the way, if you have a broken system and you live in and around Orlando, Florida, send me, uh, submit an inquiry. I was gonna send me an email, but you're supposed to submit an inquiry. It's in the video description how to do that. Uh, we'll take pictures, your description, and and uh, you might be chosen to have your system featured here on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.